This is a photo of me at the age of 12. I looked pretty happy. I believe this picture was taken before the abuse. And I know the child that was after that was not the same child. He became a very angry child. But then again, tried to put on the face and get through the day and survive. Last year, the Pennsylvania Attorney General delivered a bombshell. Today, Pennsylvanians can learn the extent of sexual abuse in these dioceses. The Attorney General's grand jury report identified more than 300 predator priests and more than 1,000 victims. It also triggered a wave of hundreds of previously unknown alleged victims to come forward and share their stories. One of those was Jimmy Pliska, who says he was raped by his local parish priest more than 40 years ago, when he was 12 years old. The abuse was a, a, a life-changing incident that just set my life in a totally different direction. Shortly after the grand jury report was released, Pliska learned that he wasn't alone. Two men who had grown up in his neighborhood came forward with their own stories of alleged abuse at the hands of the same priest. It's the same story. It's the same incidents. It happened at the same place, in the same room, by the same individual. That individual at the center of their stories was Father Michael J. Pulicair, who died in 1999. Father was like an extension of the family. There was no questions or, or, or concerns that something was wrong. He would invite altar boys to go on fishing trips, a sleepover, and uh, the only place for you to stay was with, with, with father in his room because that's all there was was father's uh, double bed. I was the runt, I was a small kid. There was no way that I could have done anything. I mean, he was 200 and some pounds. I was 98 pounds soaking wet. He's on top of me. I'm not going anywhere until he got off me and that's when I crawled out of bed and laid on the floor in a fetal position. And... Today, Pliska, John Pachkowski, and Michael Heil are represented by attorney Kevin Quinn, a high school friend of Pliska and Heil's. Knowing what happened to Jimmy and Mike and John really hits home for me. The reality is because we're the same age, we went to the same school, that could have been me or one of my three brothers. I'm committed to doing whatever I can to making sure that they get the justice that they deserve. Today, it still isn't clear what sort of justice is possible for the three men. The abuse alleged by Quinn's clients took place more than 40 years ago, well past the statute of limitations. Other states have allowed for extensions of the statute of limitations. New York, New Jersey, those legislators have voted with their conscience. Since the grand jury report was released, there have been several attempts to change the law in Pennsylvania, but none have been successful. The conundrum that my clients have is there is no ability to have their day in court. The only option available to victims like Pliska right now is a fund called the Independent Survivors Compensation Program. Like many other dioceses around the country, the Scranton Diocese created this fund to deal with claims against its priests. A victim comes forward, explains what had happened to them, and there's a determination made by the administrators as to whether or not the, the claim is credible, and if so, whether or not that victim is entitled to any compensation. There is no review process. It's a final decision. This is, if you're gonna get something, this is what you're going to get. This leaves survivors like Pliska with a daunting decision. Do they apply for the fund and accept whatever money they are offered? thereby forever giving up the option of taking the church to court? Or do they hold out and hope that maybe legislators in the state house change the law? A process that, even if it does happen, will likely take several years. And the clock is ticking. Applicants only have until the end of July to sign up and see if they are eligible for a payout. Guys, uh... Hi. Hi, Bishop, how are you? Good. Jimmy Pliska, oh, okay. how are you? I'm While visiting now. Scranton St. Peter's Cathedral, the Bishop of Scranton approached yeah, Pliska. I, I do, I did, yeah. I'm actually grateful for the opportunity to meet you. you yeah, same and here, same you, here. You know, I, I know there were some different perspectives in the uh, report, but, but please know, I mean, if, if, if it's any 
help to you that that compensation fund is available? Well, that's well. the problem that we're having. We're we're trying to figure out whether to, to to go that route or what we would much rather see is it go to the courts. I understand. How how do you make it up? You, a, a dollar amount never makes no, anything exactly. up. No, exactly. And but 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 there is a need for us to be able to say to you, this is something that we can give you, and this is and for you to be able to have uh, the opportunity to know that there is at least some gesture right, right. recognizing no. what you've gone through that right. I and can't even begin right. to fathom. If you want to talk yeah, more, I appreciate please, that. please call me. I appreciate that. Okay. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Take bless. care. Wow. It's not so much about the compensation. It's about never, ever happening to another child again. It was a crime that happened to us. Since when should the church be allowed to handle criminal cases? Why isn't it in front of the judicial system as it should be? In a statement to the Wall Street Journal, the Diocese of Scranton said, quote, while we cannot control the legislative process, this program is about providing immediate financial assistance to people who have suffered horrible cases of abuse. We understand this process may not be for everyone, which is why the program is entirely voluntary. But for many, it spares them the lengthy process of filing a lawsuit and going through legal discovery.